what's happening right now, why is it an important event uh, in the history of uh, both Gelato and Arrakis? And yeah, what are the future plans for, for Arrakis and uh, maybe a bit of um, alpha about the roadmap, what we are planning? I think there's a lot of things internally going on, but obviously we want to share it with the whole community. And so, yeah, I think why don't we just jump in right away, maybe just some very brief introductions first for those of you who are not aware of who we are. They should know if they go back a year ago to some of the, the, the YouTube lives we, we hosted back then. But um, if you are a new joiner, then um, my name is Hilma. I'm, I'm one of the founders of Gelato and web Freeze Automation Protocol. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe Ari, do you want to give yeah. it a quick introduction? Hey. Yeah, I'm Ari. I'm uh, also known as Cassandra.eth online. And um, yeah, I am used to be a developer at Gelato, um, working on different automation protocols. And out of that was birthed this Arrakis project, which I'm now one of the founders of, sort of the lead tech developer. And we're working on uh, all things concentrated liquidity provision. Uh, we want to be the, the liquidity layer of Web3 and route liquidity uh, to DEXs where it needs to be to help projects get their tokens more liquid. Awesome. Yeah, um, that's enough for the interest. I think let's just right, uh, jump right into the nuts and bolts of what we want to discuss. Um, I think maybe just uh, as a starter, uh, before we jump into like the gel lock job, I think um, I could maybe just give a very brief background to where we are with like uh, Arrakis or sort of like the, the developments um, or like the, the, the metrics that speak for Arrakis, right? And then um, and then I think we can just quickly jump into the gel lock drop and then, yeah, let's discuss um, all of the juicy bits about what we want to do. Um, and uh, yeah, I think um, if we go, if, let me just share my screen here. For those of you who don't know, um, this is the Arrakis website. You can visit it at arrakis.finance. Um, and yeah, this is where you can enter the web application where you will be seeing all of the vaults that uh, Arrakis currently has um, under management. And for example, right now there are Polygon incentives live on the Polygon network where you can earn uh, very attractive yields on, um, for example, USDC MI up to 7% or uh, up to 34% of Rapmatic Weath. And uh, yeah, Arrakis has been going very well. We all know the uh, market has been very unfavorable for a lot of projects uh, in crypto and DeFi or in general in the stock markets, right? But actually, the trend has been very inverse for Arrakis. Uh, we actually recently reached an all-time high in TVL, which are basically the assets under management in Arrakis vault that are being that are being managed by Arrakis on Uniswap 3 across Ethereum, Polygon, uh, Optimism. And uh, yeah, we are now at roughly $759 million. And if we go, this is DeFi Lama, this is like a so like a rank, like a leaderboard for different um, protocols and Web3. And if we scroll down here, for example, and this is so like all projects in Web3 in crypto across all networks, we see that actually Arrakis is now number 21. So soon top 20 of all projects in crypto in terms of assets under management. And yeah, we, we recently flipped some big names like Banker, Bracadava, Stargate. Um, and yeah, are, are slowly climbing the ranks up there. So I'm, I'm very, very excited and pleased to see that. And yeah, it just shows uh, the awesome uh, product market fit that Iraq has got over the past uh, uh, month um, and year since, since it was started. Um, and uh, yeah, what is happening right now? I think this is sort of like the interesting question. And right now what is going on is the so-called gel lock drop program and what that means is Arrakis for those of you who are not aware or maybe let me just quickly summarize Arrakis was um, started within Gelato and um, it was sort of like a, a project that we thought was very interesting um, to start because it has it had a lot of automation aspects within it and we were very interested what Uniswap v3 
brought to the table for concentrated liquidity management and the automation behind liquidity management played in our mind a key aspect. So we want to, to build something on top of it ourselves. And out of that, a product, a product called Uni was created. And this product um, was then later rebranded beginning, uh, beginning of this year to Arrakis. And we decided as the, the Gelato DAO, all the gel token holders decided uh, two months ago or three months ago, I can't remember, um, to spin out Arrakis into its own project with its own governance, with its own team, company, and uh, soon also token behind it. And uh, as you know, Gelato as this automation infrastructure um, protocol is very, it's now completely separate to Arrakis and, and Gelato has the gel token as its native token that, that powers uh, this ecosystem. And Spice is the new token, which is not released yet. It's not out there yet, right? Uh, but it will be the governance token and the ecosystem token of the Arrakis protocol. And uh, right now there is um, a unique moment in time um, because you could, or everyone who holds gel or, or acquires gel can participate in the upcoming Spice airdrop. And what that means is if you have gel right now, if you, or if you're just buying some gel, you can take it and you can lock it up for uh, three months um, until um, the September 8th of this year. So the so the actual lock time will begin on, Ju on, on June 10, and then you will have your gel locked up until September 8th. And what this will do is this will um, enable you to participate in the initial SPICE airdrop, which is scheduled for sometime around 2023. And the governance token of um, Arrakis will basically be released at that time. Um, it's yet to be confirmed by the Arrakis team. Maybe Ari can briefly touch upon that later on. But basically, you can take your gel, you can lock it, and then you will receive your pro rata share of 3% um, of the total spy supply that will be that will be um, um, minted at that time. Uh, so 3% of the total supply, right? And yeah, right now, actually, we there, there are around 23 million gel in, in, in circulation right now, and um, which is very amazing. We have around 13%, over 13% already of the whole gel circulating supply locked. So over a tenth of all the gel available right now is already locked. And we expect that number to grow over the next couple of days. And this is basically the only way how people right now uh, can participate in the initial spice distribution. How it works is very easy. You just have to have some gel and then you can um, input your gel amount here. You can click lock gel and then you will lock of your gel and you can do so on polygon phantom and ethereum so this is the this is the a gel lock drop um and by the way the contracts have been audited and everything uh, so it's safe to use i i did it myself and uh, yeah so this is super exciting and i will be following this very closely every day to see actually how um much gel will be locked at the end of the at the, at the end of the day because these people that lock their gel right now they will be one of the first governors of the Arrakis protocol, right? And they will be a key decision maker at the very beginning. Uh, and obviously, we want the gel community to participate in that. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to see um, how this will play out. Um, but yeah, this is this is uh, enough for the gel lock drop. Maybe uh, if anyone has some questions around that, uh, feel free to, to post a comment in the chat. And then we will uh, try to incorporate them maybe later on in a, in a very short Q&A. But yeah, I think enough uh, about uh, Gelato, enough about uh, the gel lock drop program. You know, you can lock your gel right now to get some of that spice later on. Uh, but yeah, I think a lot of people are curious about um, Arrakis, what's going on with Arrakis, and what are the plans for the next couple of months. And uh, yeah, what um, Ari, as the founder, is most excited about about the project, and, and probably also I think what we can do is maybe just give a very, very brief uh, overview of um, Arrakis and and how it works and and what particular problem it actually solves right now and why does it have that traction it actually has right now? Why is it soon being one of the top twenty protocols by TVL and in, in, in crypto? So yeah, maybe I think let's kick it off uh, with with Ari and. Yeah, Ari, what is uh, Arrakis? Um, how do you see it? Um, yeah, give us give us your thoughts. Yeah, 
So, so as I said in my, my very, very brief introduction, I think the, at the very highest level, Arrakis is this liquidity layer for tokens and for projects that are tokenized to bootstrap their liquidity uh, on decentralized exchanges. And um, this, this issue, this idea of being able to bootstrap liquidity on decentralized exchanges, even that is quite new. Right. Only with the explosion of uh, Uniswap style AMMs did this really gain traction. But over the last couple of years, we saw this proliferate and a number of projects, um, you know, uh, actually maintained quite deep liquidity for their markets, even on Uniswap V2 style decentralized exchanges through these totally grassroots programs. Right. These people aren't they, these tokens were not on any centralized exchanges or had any. Um, sort of big players or market makers. It was truly these grassroots ability to bootstrap liquidity for a project as long as there was a strong community behind it um, interested in this goal. Um, but this has become much more complicated even in the two years that um, these uh, types of uh, ways of bootstrapping liquidity on decentralized exchanges were first born. I think from, from the early days of just, uh, just Uniswap and Uniswap V1 and V2, Already, we've seen that this has become much more complex for projects. There are many different decentralized exchanges out there. Often, the uh, incentive layers and tokenomics have become much more complex, as well as the exchanges themselves, right? So, Arrakis was born as a project built chiefly on top of Uniswap version 3. And what Uniswap version 3 brings is this new idea of concentrated liquidity to decentralized exchanges. It's quite exciting because it allows us to make these decentralized exchanges much more efficient, much more um, like the traditional finance world where you can have very deep liquidity around current prices, right? And market makers can also express their market making strategies and preferences in a very fine grained way. Um, this is all amazing and exciting, in my opinion, and, and even bullish for the decentralized exchange ecosystem. And you can see this by the tremendous volume that Uniswap V3 has, even though a lot there are lots of people have issues, a number of different um, complaints about how difficult it is to use, maybe, or, or how hard it is to make a profit as an LP. But in the end, if you look at the volume, Uniswap V3 has absolutely impressive volumes that are rivaling centralized exchanges for things like ETH. USD pairs. So um, this is great, but the issue is that because these markets are getting more complex, more efficient, more fine grained for the market makers, it's also much more difficult for projects to figure out how to bootstrap liquidity for their tokens. The old fashioned liquidity mining schemes that were super popular in 2018 and 2019 um, were a lot more difficult to implement naively on Uniswap version 3. And there are all these new trade-offs. Where will, liquid, will liquidity be deposited? In what price ranges? How will you manage these price ranges as you know, market conditions change? Um, and how do you efficiently aggregate liquidity and use Uniswap v3 liquidity as a money Lego? Um, uh, in Uniswap version 2, the markets were not very efficient, but it was a very simple money Lego. Every market maker had the the exact same, um, they weren't in competition with each other. They couldn't specify any of these special preferences to make this non-fungible liquidity. And they got back this ERC-20 liquidity token, which could be used easily as collateral or for liquidity mining schemes for all this different stuff. Um, so Arrakis's flagship product that I think we're seeing this product market fit and you asked, why do we have this big TVL right now? Was really just about creating a really simple fungible wrapper around Uniswap v3 positions to make possible everything we were doing in Uniswap v2 in the DeFi ecosystem that um, was making it easier to bootstrap liquidity, make that same stuff possible on Uniswap version 3. And so our biggest products are a few major liquidity mining programs, like right now Polygon has um, is using Matic to uh, bootstrap more liquidity on Uniswap v3 on Polygon. And um, we have about 40% of the whole Uniswap V3 liquidity there because Matic has pledged um, over the last two months and now one more month at the very least three month program of about $3 million worth of Matic 
uh, in incentives. And this is possible, right? This liquidity mining is possible and quite easy for the users because of this uh, abstraction that Arrakis provides. It makes the vault fungible again. So, uh, so liquidity providers don't have to themselves think about these complexities of what is the price range that I should set for, for my assets and also how will this be rebalanced over time. All of this is abstracted away and liquidity providers simply provide the capital, earn the return, also in this case with Matic, earn the rewards um, and, uh, and the actual management of the liquidity can be happening by this decentralized protocol automated under the hood. And um, so liquidity mining is um, one of our big products and then another very important one is using LP tokens as collateral. And so uh, our, our biggest vault to date is um, this DAI USDC vault, which is a MakerDAO collateral type on mainnet. And so uh, what's interesting is because we take Uniswap v3 liquidity and we make it a fungible token, it's able to integrate with the, with, um, the Maker ecosystem. You can use this liquidity token as collateral to borrow more DAI and actually um, get a uh, significant leverage as an LP to the stablecoin DAI USDC market. Um, and so, so these DeFi integrations that you can do with Uniswap v3, which are very complex if you're dealing with the native DEX um, directly, um, become much easier with Arrakis. And I think we've seen projects um, get excited about what they can do with Arrakis, both just using it and also building on top of it. So that's, I think, long enough intro. <laughs> yeah. and, and I think uh, maybe just from a project's perspective what is interesting to 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 uh, hear is um let's say for gelato we have the the gel token right and uh, i myself um have realized and struggled really with how difficult it is to actually create deep efficient markets for a given token pair um on a variety of dexes and across different networks right so it's it's not only that you now have multiple AMMs and also more and more concentrated AMMs coming out on, for example, Ethereum, right? And these concentrated AMMs require, requiring you to actually have this liquidity be managed um, and actually have certain strategies running where you as a project have maybe no expertise in, uh, because obviously you are maybe good in, I don't know, building an automation infrastructure, you are, you're good in building a certain DeFi protocol, but you might not know about how market making works. It's, it's, it's a whole industry in itself. It's a million billion dollar industry in itself and in, in, in Forex and stock trading and, and, and whatnot, right? And it's, the, it's exactly the same for, for, for tokens on decentralized exchanges. And these concentrate AMMs are basically now creating the capital efficiency, which then requires these uh, players to come in to actually help projects like, for example, Gelato create their um, create deeper liquidity and more capital efficient liquidity. And um, I think we we are a happy user of Arrakis since uh, the very beginning, right? I think we have over 800k to to a million dollars worth roughly in our um, Arrakis vault, and it has been serving us very well. I think liquidity for the amount of capital that is in there is actually very very good very very um, efficiently used and um, we can probably just double it over the next couple of months and so on we'll really drive down the slippage or the price impact larger trades have when people want to either buy and sell the gel token and 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 this is just the beginning right if you if you then think about cross chain like we now have gel on phantom we now have gel on polygon and creating deep liquid markets that are managed on all of them is just a operational nightmare for, for, for projects like Gelato or, or other DeFi protocols, right? And, and there are so many, like the hypothesis here is there will be thousands and millions of projects that create their token, that create, can, can have the custom governance. This is the beauty of Web3, right? But obviously, it only all makes sense if these tokens are liquid and tradable and people can exchange them. They can be used as money Legos in DeFi protocol as collateral, for example. But all of that requires liquidity. And, and there needs to be this abstraction layer across chains, across AMMs that really facilitates that. And that's why I'm super excited what, what Arrakis is building and it's solving basically exactly that. And, 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 and we are, of course, a, a very happy a user of the platform for, from, from day one, uh, having our liquidity be managed in there and uh, it's being done very well. Um, so uh, yeah, thanks a lot for, for the short intro. Um, and yeah, I think 
Um, the the questions I think were well, I've seen I've seen a couple of questions, but probably we'll we'll put them at the end um, because I think what is what might be quite uh, interesting for people to 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 understand is the spice token, right? So obviously the spice token will come out, and I think we we haven't read too much about the spice token out there. Uh, there's not too much information out there yet, and I think the community understands that. Um, it is in, in these sort of market conditions very, um, yeah, you, you have to plan ahead and things have changed, right? It's not the market it was six months ago where everyone is just releasing a token and, and, and putting out a lot of incentives and, 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 and trying to, 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 to pump prices, right? Um, these sort of token drops and airdrops have to be thoroughly thought through and they have to be long-term sustainable to really grow an organic ecosystem around a project like Arrakis, right? So I think everyone understands that we that it requires time, but maybe um, could you shed some light on so like the current um, state of affairs in terms of like what this SPICE token will entail, um, how it will work uh, or, or what are the current uh, ideas around this and, and what can the community expect from from the, the utilities of the spice store. Yeah, for sure. So as you say, it's definitely a special market conditions right now. And our goal chiefly with Arrakis is to think really long term. And we want to have a token that ac accurately reflects our model and what we're trying to achieve here in the long term. Um, so the spice token, right? Uh, also important to note, right, our uh, thematic here, right, Ara Arrakis is a uh, planet in science fiction, certain science fiction novels. Um, uh, it's a very, uh, it's a deserted planet. So I think it's actually perfect for these bear market conditions, right? Um, it's, a, it's a scary place to live. Um, there are sandworms underneath the sand. Uh, if you're stuck out there without any liquidity, your token can be choked to death. Right, and I think this is this is the world we're looking at. Also, if you think of the story, you know the uh, the Atreides arrive on Arrakis and they think, oh, this planet's for us. And then, of course, uh, you know, uh, it wasn't so easy to take over. And so, but this planet Arrakis is uh, in this fictional universe. Everybody, even though it's a very harsh place to be. It's where it's the uh, most important planet in the Imperium because it has this very special, um, this very special substance spice, which is needed for all sorts of things. It sort of runs the economy of the universe in the science fictional universe. And so this is sort of how I see decentralized exchanges. They are not necessarily, they're a very adversarial environment. It's not necessarily easy to bootstrap strong liquidity and have a sustainable, um, a sustainable liquidity for your token. But at the same time, everybody knows that this is where they need to be, right? Uniswap V3 has more volume than anywhere else. So maybe it's complicated to be a liquidity provider. Maybe it's difficult. Maybe you're taking on a lot of risks because of uh, uh, um, uh, inventory risk and imper or impermanent loss, as some people call it. Um, uh, but it's still where you want to be. And the reason is, because if all of this volume is moving through these exchanges, then Arrakis can be a revenue generating protocol, right? What we're doing is we are providing liquidity across a number of token pairs. Um, and all of this liquidity, especially if we're optimizing it to be in the right, in the right place, is earning fees. Um, and these fees that are earned, a certain amount of this will, um, will be captured by the Arrakis protocol. So, so all of that is to say that Arrakis can be this um, revenue generating protocol and the SPICE token from the absolute highest level is going to be the um, governance layer of um, the Arrakis protocol. How do we shepherd the protocol to um, make decisions that are net positive for, for its livelihood? And it will also be um, a, like a, a revenue generating asset. So, um, so if you have the SPICE token, there might be a certain a certain kind of mechanic where you pr uh, have to lock it for a certain amount of time. This is mainly to avoid, you know, quick governance attacks because I think um, most protocols understand nowadays that simply simply voting with a token 
could uh, might open you to a number of vulnerabilities, right? If this token is liquid on lending and borrowing markets, someone could be borrowing your token and voting in a certain way and shorting at the same time. And you could see how, um, like if, if just a short term holder has a lot of governance power, you could see how this could be quite difficult. So the SPICE token can be locked for something called XSPICE. And if you're an XSPICE holder, then you're also entitled to, uh, to some of this protocol revenue that the pro protocol is capturing. So XSPICE holders are those who make governance decisions about the protocol, shepherd um, and sort of curate um, the vaults by, um, by directing SPICE incentives um, or uh, the SPICE emissions, and it will be a, a revenue generating asset. So of course, there are a number of further details to go into there, which I would love to um, reveal, but I think A, th these things are quite technical, um, so it's often better to, to read it, especially if we're going to go deep into the, the subtle token, token mechanics. And also, um, we're still figuring out what um, some of these properties, especially in these new conditions, I think everybody noticed that we saw the proliferation of a number of tokenomic schemes that seemed to work quite well, but we also saw some of their shortcomings in this recent uh, downturn. And so we as a protocol are looking to figure out how to you know, improve upon, take what's good from the last cycle and also improve upon what might seem broken from the last cycle to you know, release a token that is forward looking. Um, but I think that at the lowest layer, for sure, it is going to be powered by some sort of uh, long-term, uh, you know, long-term commitment. So this locking for X spice and this X, these X spice holders will chiefly be in charge of governing the protocol and, um, uh, you know, take uh, raking in some protocol uh, revenue that is generated. Awesome. Yeah, I think. Um... Spice, of course, very, very highly anticipated. And I think, um, yeah, there are very good reasons for it. And uh, the beauty of what I really like uh, about Arrakis um, and also what, what makes me quite excited about, about, about Spice is that the, the TVL that was achieved uh, by Arrakis is completely organic, right? There's no native token incentives being used by, by the Arrakis protocol. It's, it's literally just like the utility of it the, the um, abstraction it provides, uh, the usefulness it has for projects like Gelato, like the Polygon Foundation, who is running a $3 million uh, liquidity mining incentives on top of Arrakis on Polygon right now. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, it, it just shows that then if you like, there's a saying, if you, you should release a token once you find product market fit um, in, your, in, your pro, in, your, in your crypto project and uh, I think um, once the token is out there, we can really accelerate and really incentivize the positive things and create feedback loops that are very, uh, that makes liquidity sticky, that really drive more value to the users of the platform. And I think this will, this will um, definitely create a new epoch for, for Arrakis. Um, that is super exciting. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that and I'm sure everyone else is. And uh, just again, I think what, what is important to understand is that uh, sustainability is very important and so obviously timing has to be right and um, a token doesn't need does, that shouldn't be rushed in any ways and it should, it should be secure it should be um, audited appropriately it should be mapped out appropriately because you have sort of like one shot on getting it out and it should of course be well thought through and so um, the more time you take that the better hopefully it becomes um, Yes, yeah, so I think um, that's enough about the about the token. I think we we are all uh, equally excited about it. What I think might be interesting to hear, and I think there was also a question from the audience, and we will get into the Q and A Q &A later on, um, is uh, what is next for Arrakis, Right? We so you you built this product. Uh, it has uh, one of the biggest TVLs in in all of crypto now. Um, and there are a bunch of really cool projects using it. And uh, uh, we, we, we see, of course, the, the, the traffic it has and the inquiries it has. And, and it solves a real problem for, for us at Gelato, for many other projects. Um, so, yeah, what, what, can I, what can we as users expect from uh, the platform? Um, how, how do you think about the, the next evolution of Arrakis? How do you think about things like structured products? Um, how do you think about how projects should be incentivizing liquidity maybe in new ways of doing it that haven't been done before 
Um, and yeah, so so maybe how are the next six months looking? Yeah, I think um, I think this is a very exciting time right now in liquidity provision. Um, of course, some people, um, as I mentioned and alluded to, that Uniswap V3 is more difficult for the liquidity provider, at least on the surface, right? It doesn't seem so easy. All of us, we used to, as liquidity providers, all not be in competition. And now there is this PVP, player versus player, all liquidity providers competing against each other. Um, and it seems a lot more difficult to turn profits as well as lower fee tiers than there were before um, and more aggressive and permanent loss in the land of uh, concentrated liquidity. So, um, so while there are a number of difficulties, it's also like a wide open landscape. And I think that projects minds have also been um, expanded. Everyone in the ecosystem's mind has been expanded about um, about what the future of liquidity provision on decentralized exchanges might be. Um, and so I think it's a time where there's a lot of chance for, um, I think we're going to see new models arise. And we at Arrakis want to be um, you know, the forerunner of some of these um, new models and new ways of approaching uh, providing liquidity. Why would you do it? Where is the value there? And where is it captured from? Um, and, uh, and how to do this appropriately. So. Uh, first, some some basic things that are in the pipeline that I think are really exciting, especially for projects out there, are enabling something like what we've done with Polygon on uh, on Arrakis, uh, but with any project. So that basically, up until today, it was on you, the project, to utilize the Arrakis vault however you felt, and then if you wanted to do a liquidity mining scheme on top, that was up to you. You had to figure out how to do this that you might host it on your own site and write the contracts, et cetera. And so the first thing that I'm quite excited about is rolling out a way for projects to really easy, easily, natively on the Arrakis site, launch an Arrakis vault and also incentivize it themselves, basically without having to write any code themselves in a nice streamlined process. Um, uh, so, so to me, the, the, the absolute beautiful vision here that would be great would be you know you don't have to talk to any of us at all you can simply deploy this kind of vault uh, uh attach your own uh gauge to it to incentivize the vault and also send the manager role of the vault to a specific account and if you send it there you know that it will be um managed in a certain way with a certain kind of automated management and, and I so think it's also important to know that the 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 arrakis protocol is completely permissionless right so everyone can deploy vaults, everyone can set managers to what they want the managers to be. Um, it is completely permission is very similar to, to Uniswap. Just right now, putting everything together is very difficult, right? So you need to have like your own UI to actually then get these incentives out. And, and with the recent Polygon um, uh, incentive program that was launched, we actually rolled out like um, quietly this, uh, Uh, incentive mechanism uh, natively on the Arrakis website, right? Uh, Arrakis.finance, app, app.arrakis.finance. And yeah, I think um, that's, a, that's a huge win for a lot of projects because it, like, it literally enables them to, within five minutes, get very deep liquidity for their tokens. Exactly. And, um, and some of the complexities that we've been working in a more ad hoc way with over the last year can now be really streamlined and uh, be a great way for projects to start uh, yeah, bootstrapping liquidity on Uniswap V3 without any of the headache or, or having to dive in too, too deeply about all the mechanics at work there. Um, as well, I think how this ties to the SPICE token is that uh, soon we'll be giving more details out about how projects that are utilizing and integrating with Arrakis can also be entitled to their own portion of the airdrop um, there's a certain percentage of the SPICE token that will be airdropped to uh, projects and protocols that are uh, utilizing Arrakis vaults. So watch out for that in the near future. So this is kind of the short term of new exciting features. I think another feature that users have been really um, knocking on the door for and we're, is, uh, is going to be here soon is the ability to also uh, be able to provide your liquidity with any amount of the two assets you want so that these will be rebalanced for you under the hood instead of uh, uh, currently you kind of have to figure out exactly the ratio of the two tokens you need. Uh, the onus is on you, the user, uh, before you enter the vault. So, so this is the short term. 
I think these will be some really exciting improvements. I think in the more medium term are some really exciting new things. I won't go too, too deep into them. But um, yes, these Arrakis vaults are a primitive, right? They're a fungible token uh, built on making integration with Uniswap v3 liquidity much easier. But this primitive can be utilized and has been designed specifically to be utilized by other protocols, partner protocols, to be a money Lego inside the DeFi uh, ecosystem. And so one option that this opens up is the ability to build these structured products on top of Uniswap version 3, which allow for more advanced um, market making and liquidity provision techniques that are more akin to what you see in um, traditional finance. Or even some people who are really, um, who really know what they're doing in DeFi do these types of things manually, right? So they create, for instance, a delta neutral liquidity position by, um, by also borrowing some of the tokens that they're, uh, that they're using to provide liquidity with. Essentially, they can short uh, short some of these assets that they are holding because this is what this is the risk of being a liquidity provider is that you're exposing yourself to maybe taking on a lot of inventory of a token that's actually going down in price and um, this is the main risk of liquidity provision what we call impermanent loss and so this can be hedged with a number of techniques like I was saying here potentially you could short these tokens so that now if the token's going down you're also making money on on the short position a number of other ways to do this with options, um, but I think we're we're definitely um, heading towards this domain of uh, rolling out some hedged vault products, so products that utilize the vault under the hood, but also have these additional hedges, which I think people will be quite interested in. People who would like to be more passive, long-term liquidity providers. What we've seen over the last year is that really on Uniswap v3 vanilla, it's quite difficult to turn a profit as a long-term very passive liquidity provider. Either you have to actively manage this liquidity or you have to be balancing this portfolio. It can't be the only part of your portfolio is this provision of liquidity. It needs to be balanced with um, other types of um, assets and financial instruments. And so this is a very, very exciting domain coming in, uh, in the future. Um, I think another one is our Vault V2. And I, uh, the idea here is that the, the version two of this vault will take all the learnings we've had with this current vault product that we built. And we actually built this just based off the white paper of Uniswap v3 before, um, before Uniswap v3 was even live yet. So I think we've had a ton of learnings about our vault product and some things we saw worked really well. I think the simplicity of our money Lego has been extremely useful and it's why we have the TVL that we have. But there's still a number of ways to go. For instance, I'm so surprised that still today, even a year after Uniswap v3 has been out, there is no place you can go to, in one click, provide liquidity, but not just in one range, but in a more interesting uh, pattern, right? Liquidity provision on Uniswap v3 is these ranges, but even in the white paper and everywhere, the idea is that you need to actually put multiple ranges and um, layer them on top of each other in order to get a liquidity distribution that might be the one you want, right? You might want a liquidity distribution which says, put a lot of my liquidity right here in this narrow band, but I also want some liquidity on the fringes in case this un of this unlikely price scenario. And I'm so impressed that this is there's nowhere you can go right now to actually do this in one click. People are mostly manually doing this by placing a bunch of ranges on maybe the Uniswap UI or with some scripts they wrote, and it's quite cumbersome. And so, um, yes, version two, there will be a, a lot of things there, but this is sort of the guiding principle is to make our money Lego even more flexible, even more useful for these higher up in the DeFi stack, things like these structured products. Um, and so uh, less constrained in terms of how you can manage uh, in this Vault ERC20 token, which is managing a bunch of liquidity inside of Uniswap, now it can be much more flexibly managed, and this will uh, will be the catalyst for a lot of new products on top. And then eventually, I would say in the next year, and then even two years, if we're looking towards cross-chain liquidity provision. But I'd say the first thing um, would be cross-dex liquidity provision. So new dexes are coming on the scene. I think. While Uniswap v3 is where we are right now, and very happy to be there with the volumes that we have, um, I think Uniswap v3 has now been this uh, 
uh, it's sort of holding the flag of there's still we can we can still do better with Dex capital efficiency. And so a lot of new uh, protocols also are jumping on this bandwagon, and we're going to see a proliferation of AMMs. But all of these new AMMs continue to be more complex for liquidity providers, allow them to express these fine brand preferences. And so imagine an Arrakis vault which can actually rebalance liquidity across multiple concentrated liquidity AMMs at first, even just on the same network. Um, this could be very, very useful for a project. And then, and then we really get to achieve our long-term goal of being this liquidity layer for Web3, right? Because now you can spin up a vault and it's not even attached to a single decentralized exchange. It's really just a vault that you're using to bootstrap liquidity across this network. Um, and, and this is, I believe, will be a, a very interesting new abstraction for the DeFi space. Um, and then this is even farther down the road, I think, but uh, then you can even think about having a single vault uh, deployed on a certain network that is actually deploying liquidity across networks. And I think this is, this is in the far, f farther future, but still a very exciting domain of, for now, like uh, early research, right? Um, that some of this infrastructure is still being built, right? Gelato is building this kind of infrastructure and, and bridges are building infrastructure. And as that infrastructure becomes more mature, then this unlocks the ability for things like cross-chain liquidity provision as well. So bunch of things in the pipeline, each of them, you know, more uh, uh, needs more and more research than the last. But um, I think it's, as I said, a really exciting time to be in liquidity provision. Yeah. So, yeah. No, totally. And uh, yeah, the mega trend is basically AMMs moving to more and more capital efficiency at the costs of actually increasing um, the complexity for projects. So they no longer can manage their liquidity themselves. There needs to be this abstraction on top. And at the same time, you have fragmentation going on, more and more DEXs, more and more networks. Making your token liquid on five different chains on five different AMMs is just completely impossible for projects. And this is what market makers do, right? They go through five exchanges, they make their tokens liquid, and they have this sort of virtual liquidity layer within these sort of very oligo, uh, these sort of very monopolistic market makers in the space going on, right? And and this is what we want to change. We want to we envision this one liquidity layer underneath in like a modular way underneath underneath all networks that every project can tap into and use and every network and every application that needs to access that liquidity can easily do so. And I think there's a lot of extremely exciting stuff being built. And I think it, it I think it, of it as this very core layer of the Red3 stack in, in general that, that will be um, will solve hopefully this this liquidity fragmentation that we currently see. But um, I think uh, just being mindful of the time here, I think we we, we talked a bunch about uh, uh, what we were, what Arrakis roadmap looks like, and I think the, at some point there there will be more information released in like a written and a visual way. But it was already epic to hear them from you, Ari. Um, but yeah, so then maybe let's just have a look at some of the questions um, of the audience um, and see what they would like us to address here. And then maybe let's just, uh, I will just try to answer all of them. Let's quick, let's maybe pick one from Weston Nelson. Uh, it's a fun one. I heard those who control the spies control the universe. Can you talk about that, Ari? Yeah, well, so yes, a famous quote from the novels, those who control the spice control the universe. And I think, you know, the long term play, right, about why, why, why could spice be a very powerful asset to uh, hold and thus be one of the governors over this protocol is exactly this, right? If, if, if we can achieve um, these goals we're setting out to, to be this liquidity layer for a number of different projects, abstracting away um, a lot of complexities and, and aggregate and think of it as like an aggregation, right? This already happened on the trader side, right? One inch exists and you have a bunch of liquidity on all these networks, but for traders, you off many trades route through this aggregator who is abstracting away the complexity from the trader to know which, which decentralized exchange should I be operating with at any given moment, right? And so if we can achieve this vision for the liquidity provision side, and we can be this, this place where, you know, uh, uh, capture 
a lot of the liquidity, which we are the ones directing and also taking a, 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 a portion of the fees earned by all of these assets under management, um, then I think holding spice and being able to govern over directing where curating how that liquidity ought to go and to capture some of this revenue will uh, will be quite valuable in the universe uh, if we can achieve these aims. So yeah. that's about and, all I can say. And I think also for those of you who haven't read the, the book yet or um, who are not uh, big book readers, uh, watched the movie yet, uh, we, we can definitely highly just recommend you to, to give it a try and, and have a read. Uh, the Dune universe from which Arrakis obviously got expired, uh, inspired a lot uh, is epic and um, yeah, you should definitely dig in um, it's, it's a fun weekend activity if you don't have any plans yet um, cool, then let's move on to another question by uh, JP uh, want to know how the automation network is really doing, TVL is tracked but we don't really see health of the automation network, uh -huh. what's going on, maybe this is probably more directed to uh myself um and uh yeah so of course we've seen arrakis tvl and lately obviously uh, most of or a lot of the um attention from the community was around that sort of token event that, that happened with uh, the the gel locking and the spice airdrop coming up at some point but um the reason why we one of the one of the most one of the most um, important reasons why we actually decided to to spin off um, Arrakis from Gelato is because the core product of Gelato, which is this automation infrastructure that powers Web three, that projects use to outsource all of their Web three DevOps around getting transaction mined, automating transaction, getting any type of transaction type executed reliably across all chains. Um, it really, really picked up significant significant speed, um, and it's just impossible for these two projects co to coexist in the same sort of uh, or driven by the same organization in one environment. That's why we had to spit it out, and we we are in the favorable situation where we have two projects that have really, really found product market fit and and have gained a lot of traction. And um, and Gelato um, is, uh, uh, is is no different than Arrakis in that sense. Uh, but obviously the metrics are very different. We are not where we there is no TVL you can track. There are no um, uh, projects putting like millions of dollars in there that just like sit there and, and maybe are used on Uniswap. But it's transaction being transactions being executed and arbitrary con transactions being executed. And just to to name a couple of examples of projects that recently started using Gelato to automate certain processes in the applications, you have a maker DAO that started implementing Gelato to update a lot of low-level protocol tasks like updating collateral um, uh, requirements or, or debt ceiling updates. Then you have Olympus Pro that uses Gelato to rebase their algorithmic stablecoin. You have Zetron, a game that uses Gelato to automatically breed horses every now and so. I think there are over seven or 8,000 horses that already got bred. Um, and then a bunch of yield farming protocols like beefy finance that need to constantly recompound fees earned, right? So there are, like, think about an application that you're using and think about what processes need to happen in the background that have to be automated for this application to actually function as intended. And these are the processes that will, over time, all be automated by Gelato. And we have already seen a huge uh, uh, wave of adoption happening. And I don't know, just um, to show you and right like because Gelato is available on so many chains, it's very hard to sort of like aggregate all of the data and show it. But we're actually working on on making more data public and, and sharing more of that information. But just like what you can always do is very simply go to like Poly Polyscan or any other um, block explorer. And you just this is the Gelato network smart contract, right? Uh, that is basically the entry point to all the transactions of the network. And you can actually see we just recently crossed um, 1 million transactions on, on Polygon. So we already executed a million transactions. And if you go in there, you, you see every couple, of trans every couple of seconds just transactions being executed. And these are transactions for hundreds of dApps, right? This is not one application powered by Gelato. It's hundreds or thousands of applications powered 
bei Gelato. Und recently we, we also re released our uh, Relay uh, SDK feature, which basically is um, reposition Gelato the whole stack because Gelato is not only used for automating transactions right now. So not only used for scheduling transactions that have to be executed in the future, but now applications, for example, like Conix or other bridges that need to constantly get transactions mined on 10 different chains in a reliable and scalable fashion can also use Gelato to get transactions mined instantaneously and reliably. And so Gelato is really this plugin that any blockchain needs to actually have projects build scalable, sophisticated applications, not only in DeFi, but in gaming and a lot of other projects. So um, we are actually close to reaching 2 million transactions across all networks. So um, this is a huge milestone that we expect to achieve in the in the next uh, week or so. So we will, of course, share that and there will be more information about everything. But uh, long story short, there's a, there's a lot of... Um, traction going on a lot of exciting projects uh integrating gelato on a daily basis and and we we can't even pick up uh, we i don't even know anymore who is using gelato I, I sometimes really get surprised by by projects and i didn't know about them um yeah so so i hope this sort of like answers your questions and obviously feel free to 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 uh in the in this quarter so ask more specific questions about integrations or statistics and stuff happy to share them uh, it's just very hard to visualize them one thing on automation in, on the Arrakis side is that since we started on Polygon and we got all this liquidity with the Matic liquidity mining that's going on, we've been seeing, uh, we haven't really been advertising it much, but our the amount of automation happening under the hood with theory compounding uh, on these Polygon vaults is like once every five minutes or so with the larger vaults with more than five million or so inside. So um, if the question happened to be about automation on the Arrakis side, um, you can also go to the contracts there and it's a little bit harder to fish around and find these automated rebalances happening. But you can see um, when when all the vault liquidity is removed and then added again, um, this is the uh, Gelato actually, which we are a happy user now, no longer part of Gelato, but still a, pro a project that integrates with Gelato. And this is Gelato executing these auto fee compoundings in the background. It's quite, uh, it's quite cool to see because on mainnet it only happens every so often because um, you know, transactions are much more expensive, so it's only worth auto compounding fees in a more, you know, every few days kind of style. But here on Polygon, all of a sudden it was happening, you know, once every 10 minutes or so. Quite interesting stuff. Yeah, super, super excited, of course, to have Arrakis remain a, a heavy user of Gelato's infrastructure. And there you just see the synergies between the two projects, of course, that exist. Um, the more Arrakis is used, the more Gelato will be used in the background. And this is the case for all sort of applications that integrate Gelato, which is which is great. Um, and I hope uh, Arrakis, the Arrakis team is happy with uh, everything um, that uh, Gelato uh, brings um, to yeah. the table there. <laughs> um, cool. Then um, just coming to an end, let me just uh, see what we have left. So what's coming up on the Arrakis side? I think we have discussed we have discussed that already. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there's a question about like MEV and uh, Arrakis, maybe also probably referencing like just in time liquidity and stuff. Um, maybe I think probably like, do you have like a, a, a very short comment yeah. about that? Probably this is such a rabbit hole. I think yeah. we don't have the time to, no, to no, jump no. into that, but yeah, maybe just a quick comment. So yeah, I think one is that um, uh, how we rebalance the vaults um, also using Gelato Automation allows us to avoid any kind of MEV extraction. I would say that's the most important. Our rebalances are safe. This is because of the possibilities that are provided by um, uh, A, how the contracts are structured so we can pass an off-chain kind of um, you know minimum amount out sort of uh, slippage parameter, which allows us to make sure that we're not being front run and if there are any swaps happening inside of the rebalance, as well as when things are being executed automatically with through Gelato, we have direct access to like flash bots. Um, so this allows our transactions to be processed uh, through a private mempool. So things like this allow us uh, to just keep security of the vaults, no matter what operations are happening with this liquidity under the hood. It's quite important, but um, so far, we have uh, been able to avoid any kind of intense MEV extraction from any of our vaults or any of our rebalances. So this is great. 
In terms of, uh, yes, just-in-time liquidity is a very, very interesting subject in Uniswap v3, but uh, I think we're taking a look at what it could mean and what it could mean for Arrakis and how we can also even leverage it ourselves. Um, uh, but that's about all I'll say. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, probably we need another a separate uh, conversation about MEV liquidity providing Arrakis and, and everything. So. Yeah. Probably, yeah, let's let's postpone the, the, the more detailed answers to that. Um, let me just try to dissect because we are running out of time here. Maybe just a, a final uh, question. Um, okay, there's one which is, uh, okay, there's a, a bunch, but I think we already talked about uh, Spice Airdrop 2023. It's um, market conditions, basically, um, that the, the team is waiting for to, to, to turn positive again and also just being patient and waiting for the right moment and then f having... A concrete plan audits all of this stuff it's just uh, good things take time and yes. uh, it shouldn't be rushed in in, in any way uh, but there may be yeah it's, it's i think it's a difficult question to answer it's maybe just like a philosophical one um or like a theoretical one whether this is actually possible right he someone asked um can the Arrakis infrastructure process liquidity adequately, even at the level of a lunar crash kind of situation? So in case you don't know, <laughs> lunar crash, like this lunar powered uh, the UST stablecoin. Um, it's an algorithmic stablecoin. And yeah, it, it, it recently within a, in a, in a, <laughs> within, a, within a time frame of a week or so, um, I think uh, uh, crashed by 99% or something. So uh, something which is a very very unexpected situation right and and so obviously this it, it is such a such a such an unusual event that um i, I guess for it is a very hard uh, uh, uh thing to take it from a liquidity provision perspective but maybe ari like theoretically what how, how would that play like in maybe as a as an lp how would that maybe play out from your point of view and uh, would it actually be feasible or are these events just like if they happen then yeah it's it's very very hard to to do anything yeah i think here is i think first of all yes one the, the short answer is basically no right um and why it's not because arrakis has any shortcomings it's because no liquidity provider who is promising to provide luna stablecoin or Luna ETH liquidity could can really survive such a situation, right? This is the risk of providing liquidity is that you take on inventory of the tokens that are actually uh, the losing value in relation to the opposite token. And Luna lost, you know, 99%, probably a couple of times, 99% from there as well. And so if, if your goal is to provide Luna liquidity, um, even throughout this market condition, I think everybody will be getting wrecked. Um, and so that's the short answer. Um, I think as a solo LP, right, what can someone do in these sorts of situations um, is mainly about, you know, assessing the market. And at the end of the day, you need to cut your losses, basically. So uh, I would say you don't, you don't want to be providing liquidity to the Luna market in, in such an event, right? Certain downturns and fluctuations and high volatility can actually uh, earn you a lot. Um, but I think at the level of this kind of crash, right, Luna went all the way to zero. I don't really see any way as you're just trying to spend your time inside of like Luna liquidity provision markets that you can end up with anything except holding a giant bag of Luna worth nothing. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the answer. Now there are some, right, this, these hedging and structured products kind of idea could be a way to mitigate uh, a little bit, right? And only to a certain extent. But if you're like a solo trader kind of person who's providing liquidity and you're adequately hedged, um, then potentially you can get out in time, right? I think your hedge still would only would only be, you know, absorbing losses up to a certain point and then after a while, probably not anymore. Um, but the idea would basically be is is about uh, understanding that the kind of inventory risk that you have as a liquidity provider and so taking these assets off the market you know fleeing fleeing to uh better assets before the crash has like fully completed right so maybe you can earn a lot of fees on the way down halfway and then and have some sort of uh short hedge um and then close this out and maybe you'd, you'd be okay uh but yeah i mean 
Yeah. The short answer is valid, probably no, right? <laughs> and I think what this just makes a bit more apparent is that you as a passive LP are sort of at the at the weakest point, right? Because you, first of all, are not following markets 24-7, uh, or you as a project doing your LP in yourself, right? You're not following the markets 24-7, you don't know how to react, and and you need that sort of knowledge and active um, management to, for example, know when to pull liquidity as well, right? So, so when is it actually, when should you, when maybe at that sometimes there shouldn't be any liquidity and it's better off actually not being there for the, maybe not the liquidity in this instance, but for the LPs, for the projects that are providing liquidity, right? So there, um, it has so many parties to consider those that provide the inventory, those who want to create the liquidity, um, those that want to trade and go in and out, right? And it is a very fine balance you have to take and to make it sustainable and to grow liquidity organically over time and, and have it be sort of in this positive feedback loop going upwards. And this is what I think uh, Iraq has really managed well in, in, in the past with, with projects trying to um, optimize for for all these parties and fi finding a, 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 a very well designed balance there, but obviously there are situations where then, yeah, no one can no one can really predict them or, or you can anticipate them, but then timing wise you can also then only react and maybe have some sort of automation prepared to when these things unravel what you do right. Um, yeah. But but yeah, I think uh, it's an interesting thought experiment uh, for sure um, and a good question as well. Um, I also think that you notice that actually this is what happened, right? Why does the cra the price crash so hard is because everyone wants to exit the Luna ecosystem, but all the liquidity providers do as well, right? So the liquidity is getting thinner and thinner as more and more people are also trying to sell their Luna. And so this is how, all, how prices can move so intensely, right? Uh, everybody wants to exit, but nobody wants to be the counterparty anymore. Yeah. And so, yeah. Well... But yeah, I think I think we are already over time. Um, but yeah, I think uh, thanks a lot, Ari, for taking the time to to present to us the the current state of um, Arrakis, what the team has been up to, and what the progress progress has been. And I think I'm personally extremely excited about where this is going uh, as a user with Gelato for Arrakis, and just also seeing what you guys are doing. I'm 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 more than happy um, with uh, where it's heading, and, and super excited. And yeah, if you, in case you um, want to participate in the initial um, spice distribution, make sure to, um, and if you, if you have some gel, of course, uh, make sure to lock your gel before um, the uh, lock date, which is six of the road, is it somewhere in June? June, yeah. June, June 10th, uh, make sure to lock until June 10th. Um, and yeah, it doesn't really matter if you lock now or lock then, um, just uh, you will be locked for the same period of time starting June 10th and you will unlock beginning of September. And yeah, thanks a lot for, for everyone to, to listen. Um, and I hope we hope that that sort of shed some light about the recent developments. And uh, we, of course, want to do this more often as, as usual. Um, and yeah, if you have any other follow up questions, we have our Discord. Um, uh, Ari and Arrakis, you can, you can reach at arrakis.finance. Uh, um, gelato can be reached at gelato.network and yeah, feel free to, to chat to us in Discord, Telegram or whatnot. Thanks a lot everyone for tuning in and we hope you had a good time and yeah, talk to you soon. Thanks everybody.